This case takes place in Brazil on the 4th of April 2019. The information surrounding this case has been rather hard to find. I've done my best to dig deep, but some information is missing. At the time, Karina Roque was an 18-year-old woman who lived in San Roque, Brazil with her mother and little brother. Her little brother was a five-year-old boy named Maicon Roque, and by all accounts, the two got along rather well. On the 4th of April 2019, Karina's mother went to the market to get some shopping. She asked Karina if she would mind looking after her little brother while she was gone, and she obliged. Karina's mother was out shopping for well over an hour, and when she was done, she made her way home. But when she got home, she tried to open the door only to find it wouldn't budge. Perplexed, she shouted out for her children to come and open the door. However, Karina refused. She replied and told her mother that she would not open up. Worried as to what was going on, Karina's mother contacted her brother-in-law, who is also Karina's uncle, along with other family members. These relatives didn't live too far away and made their way over as soon as possible. These relatives further tried to convince Karina to open the door, but again, she refused. With no other options available and concerns for Mike on growing, they decided to take action. Karina's uncle began to kick the door down. Once inside, they were met with a truly horrific scene. Karina had done something so despicable that it caused her mother to faint on the spot. She had killed, mutilated, and partially decapitated her little brother. Immediately, Karina began to attack her uncle. She threw various items in the house at him and hit him with a rock. As Karina was trying to escape and run from the scene, she was able to be apprehended, and the emergency services were called. As she was being held down, the family dog began to attack her, and Karina retaliated by biting the dog. The police officers arrived and were met with the gruesome scene. They found the lifeless body of Mykon surrounded by black candles. Upon closer inspection, officers discovered that she had eaten some parts of the young boy's body. Karina was swiftly arrested. After being taken to the police station, Karina initially refused to speak to any of the officers about why she had attacked and killed her brother. But crime scene investigators would soon piece some of it together, and she would tell them what happened. Once her mother left to go shopping, Karina took the opportunity to enact a twisted and planned fantasy upon her little brother. The details are incredibly disturbing, so I do warn you before I proceed. Karina explained to the police that she asked her little brother if he wanted to come into her bedroom and play some games. Once she lured him inside, she grabbed a pillow, pinned him down, and suffocated him. Once Mykon was no longer conscious, she then grabbed a penknife and attempted to remove his head, leaving him partially decapitated. She also inserted the knife into his eyes and burned his feet with a lighter, and removed his genitals and consumed them. This case is just beyond words, but some of you may feel an extremely small amount of relief to know that Mykon was indeed deceased by the time Karina began to mutilate and cannibalize his body. The police worked to understand why this happened and investigated whether or not Karina had killed Mykon in some kind of satanic ritual or sacrifice. At the scene, officers found a penknife, a burned mobile phone, a USB memory stick, and a small amount of an illegal substance. It's believed that she destroyed her mobile phone to hide some of the contacts that she had on her device. When speaking to the media, the police stated, We are investigating if the child was killed during some kind of devil-worshipping ritual. We want to know if the accused had links on social networks to a group of Satanists or black magic practitioners, and if she was encouraged or incited by someone to commit the crime. Karina was charged with aggravated homicide, attempted murder against her uncle, concealing a corpse, and for biting the family dog. The mother told the police that Karina and her brother had always gotten along rather well, and described her as a quiet person. There was no indication that she would ever be capable of such a thing. 
They did, however, say that she began to show altered behaviour in the week before the murder taking place. The last article I could find on this case on the internet was posted on the 13th of February 2020. This article states that Karina's mental health was evaluated by professionals, and it was found that she is suffering from schizophrenia, and that Karina's defence team were using this diagnosis to claim that she might not be mentally fit to stand trial. I'm unsure if any further rulings have been made, but at the time, the judge had not yet ruled on the decision, and that a lawyer working on the case has stated that it's entirely possible that she will be acquitted of the crime on the grounds of diminished responsibility. The mother has said that she is trying her best to move on with her life after this traumatic event. However, how someone can move on from something so horrific, I'll never know. And of course, has said she is struggling greatly. As I said earlier, this case seems to be no longer being reported on. I'm unsure as to why, but I've struggled to find any more information on this case past February of 2020. I have no idea if she was found guilty or found to be unfit to stand trial. I stumbled upon this case while browsing on the internet, and although it's a short one, I thought I'd share it with you all on here. If anyone knows anything more, or lives near to where this happened and have heard of any updates, please feel free to share what you know in the comments and link some articles or court documents. Thank you.